Hello and good evening, members of Builders and Co-Creators. I hope you're having a beautiful evening. Sorry we are late to come online or live five minutes. Um, we had issues with connectivity, but now it's all sorted. It's very, very good to see you. We, had, uh, we have planned for you a very interesting subject matter around building or buying. So the question this evening is to build or to buy. So please stay tuned. We'll be keeping you here for about 40 or so minutes, and then you can move on to other things. And um, to discuss this matter, we are about to introduce to you our two guests. We have a panel of two, people who have the experience, people who are in the industry, people who have acted in this area of business at a personal level and at a business level. But before we do that, maybe we take a minute for purposes of housekeeping, because it's been a while since you were online, uh, since you were live, you perhaps have forgotten that we have a page called Builders and Co-Creators, Please look for that page on Facebook and like it. Soon we'll be moving this live broadcast to the page away from the group. So you don't want to miss this episode. So kindly find that uh, group and give it the thumbs up. Secondly, we have a lands group called Chasing the Title Deed. Please find Chasing the Title Deed and join so that you see the land deals. Soon we'll be having uh, panelists of lawyers and conveyance uh, specialists who are the, and the National Construction um, Authority live in that group. So if you want to buy land or if you want to know what the intricacies that are around the purchase of land and ownership and inheritance and stuff like that, what is uh, farmland and what is um, land for human dwelling, how do you know when to buy and when not to buy, that's the right place. So please join that uh, group and like it. And lately, uh, we have uh, we acquired um, a group called Glam My Home that is for purposes of interior finishes and soft furnishing. Uh, please join that group as well. So we run those three groups because we believe that where there is land, where there is a house, there must have been land in the beginning, and where there is a construction, where there is um, you know, brick and mortar, there will need to be some sort of, you know, interior finishing. So please join those groups. And finally, uh, the YouTube uh, channel, all these things that we discuss here are actually posted on the YouTube channel. So find the YouTube channel called Builders and Co-Creators. You will be able to watch all the other episodes that we have flighted here before, including this one. So yeah, please be in touch with us if you're a building enthusiast or a building... Um, um, you know, professional or you're a homeowner or an aspiring homeowner, you need to be in those groups because they're all, all, all relevant to your interests. Um, Mwangi, would you like to say hello? Sorry, I've spoken too much before I invite you. <laughs> no, I think it's okay. So I think maybe something you have left out is that we are also live on YouTube. Uh, so people uh, can actually go to YouTube and subscribe to be able to get on time notifications when we are live. Yeah. I think that's it, Salim. So, yeah, so we, uh, are, we are live here, but we are also live on YouTube. Do not miss that. If you cannot join here, join on YouTube and you'll be able to watch this live. Tomorrow morning at 8, your admins are going to be representing you and your group in a show on K24 at 8 a.m. At K24 at 8 a.m., so please join and ask questions. You're even allowed to call in. So without wasting too much time, I guess we introduce two, our two guests. Mangi? Yeah. Okay. So, our panelists, you're welcome, okay. Ruben and Tendo. Look at you looking all smiley and good. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so, so much for honoring our invite. Mr. Ruben Kimani is the CEO of Username, and we will ask him to introduce himself and show what Username does. Um, Wangi, you want to keep your music <laughs> quiet? Yeah, and yeah. then there is Tendo. Miss Tendo is a building enthusiast. Now, Tendo is my personal friend, by the way. Yeah, always adding value to things. But today, Tendo is representing herself. Um, Tendo has bought a house or houses. She has built another. She has torn it down. She has built it again and now building another one. So whether you want to build or to um, to buy, Tendo might have some of the answers. And she's also very conversant in this industry and in the financing industry. And she's a trained lawyer. So she is very well capable of taking us 
on. Tendo, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so because Mr. Kimani is representing his company, would you like to introduce to us what uh, user Uh, okay, thank you, Salim, uh, Mwangi, Tendo, and all our members who are watching today. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is uh, Ruben Kimani, uh, CEO of Username Investment. And Username is basically a um, leading property company in Kenya. We focus on affordable land for investment and for immediate settlement. We are talking about uh, 150,000 to 800,000. These pieces of property comes in value added fashion, gate, uh, fences, we do demarcation and all that. By the time you're coming, you can be able to do uh, your development. Of course, they come with title deeds and all the prices are all inclusive. We are also known as a company that delivers uh, for the last six years. Of course, you have not had fracas, especially in these platforms like this one. We are known for delivering title deeds, and we have won so many awards. I think more than twenty in the last two years. I think most of these members are able to see this, and that's what we do on a daily basis. If you come to us, we'll be able to serve you. Uh, and also in this platform, I, I'm also very happy to be here because I think we'll be able to share all the experiences that we have to the benefit of the members. There are those who are asking themselves this difficult question, and I believe this able panel will be able to give direction, advice, and experiences. There's also a sharing platform. You may learn from some members. I can see them commenting. So thank you so much. I think we'll be able to do to discuss more as we go along. Excellent. Thank you so much for introducing username. So I think we go right into the questioning or into the, you know, the panel discussion. And the first question that I'd like to share, I mean, to, to ask is um, if you could share the process, either of you, if you could share with us the process of purchasing a home and particularly in the urban areas. Where do members start, you know, quickly without necessarily, you know, the deep detail uh, where if I want to buy a house, where do I begin? At what point is the house mine? Okay, okay. I don't know whether we are going to start with Tendo from experience. Maybe I can give, <laughs> I can be able okay. to give some, some of the uh, steps from my experience uh, and also what we do here. I think the most important thing is someone to know what they are looking for, and uh, they have to start with researching. Uh, if you're looking, say, for a house for investment, or maybe to do a home, you have to think on where you want to get the house from. And I'm saying that because different areas represent different interests. The areas that are good for investment, the areas are good for for immediate residential development. So the first thing is to first do some basic research, make Google your friend, ask people like us, ask experts so that you're able to know. The other thing that is important, especially in our country in Kenya, you have to deal with registered agents. Or you have to deal with the tangible uh, companies, companies that you can be able to trust because there are those companies that have not completed construction and all those things. There's a process you follow for you to be able to know that someone or a company can be uh, trusted. Of course, through experience, you look at the projects they have completed, do they give title deeds and all that kind of uh, stuff. The other thing, of course, very fast, the other thing you have to do is now to walk. And I usually encourage from my own personal perspective, houses, are, uh, houses and land is uh, uh, an emotional aspect. You want something that fits your description. You want a big kitchen. You want a big dining room and all those things. You have to walk. Of course, you have to depend on agents on the ground. Like what we do is just tell them, I want 10 houses that look like this, three bedroom, big kitchen, open kitchen and all those things. What I'm trying to say, you have to walk as much as you are trying to use an agent to look for a house. And uh, the second last thing is about uh, documentation, which is very important. Once you get a house and you're happy with it, maybe an agent has given you 10, now you have shortlisted one, you have to now ask for all the documentation belonging to that house and make a lawyer your friend. 
we always advise you have to use professionals from the beginning, whether it's a surveyor or something. Like at this point, you have to use a lawyer so that they do such to tell you. Uh, for houses, you'll find that uh, the titles that are given have different leases. And you have to ensure that the person who is selling the house to you is in that lease. Because most of these houses we are having here in Nairobi are sub-leases. They have to be included in the original lease. So a lawyer, instead of maybe you may not be able to know everything, but you have to enlist a lawyer to tell you whether the property is okay or not. And finally, for those, depending on how you want to finance, of course, budgeting is important. Maybe you want a house worth 20 million, 15, 10 million, 5 million, 3 million. Of course, that will determine where exactly you can get such a house. You'll do the budgeting. And you also have to decide, are you going to pay cash? Are you going to pay by instalment? There are those companies that are allowing you to pay for one year, two years and stuff like that. Are you going to take a mortgage? In that case, you have to uh, know beforehand whether you are going to be fully qualified for it. You may get a house, then you realize the bank will not give you anything and you may not be going anywhere. So of course, assuming and that you have been able to do a mortgage, how much you can get from your bank before you actually know what you know. Your budget is how much you can get from your bank or how much you have in cash. So it does yeah. help members to go to your bank and find out with my salary or with my income how much am I qualified for. So you are looking for a house that is within the amount that no. you're qualified no. for, right? Exactly. Exactly. And lastly, of course, is the process of doing the transfer. And I'm saying a lawyer can be able to help you in that. Just to pick up, just need to do your own research. Find a company or a developer that can be trusted. The third thing is about searching and documentation so that you don't get into a court case or a house that has problems. And finally, you have to determine whether you're going to do mortgage or you're going to do cash or installment and know whether you can be able to afford it so that you don't spend three months looking for a house. At the 19th day, you realize you cannot be able to afford oh, it. Oh, it's so 10 can, million and I have one. <laughs> <laughs> so you can be able to follow that process. But if you don't remember anything, I think a lawyer, a good lawyer can be able to guide you through the process. Nice. Nice. Tendo, would you like to chime in? Is there anything that you think uh, Ruben has left out? Definitely. Um, um, from the lawyer's uh, perspective, when uh, you're purchasing a house, the first thing, of course, that you determine is whether you're doing it in cash or you're getting a mortgage facility. And uh, the, the, the simpler way is definitely to pay cash. But uh, if you are doing a mortgage, as, as he has said, you basically go for a pre-qualification, you approach your bank, find out whether you pre-qualify. That is actually the first thing before you even start searching for land. You, if you know you're going the mortgage way, go to the bank, get pre-qualified. The moment you've been pre-qualified, what you now do is you go out there, you scout uh, for, for a property that uh, is within your budget. Once you've done that, you've seen a property, the next thing is a search. Yeah? You basically ask the owner of the, of the property to assist you with a copy of the title deed. Then you go to Ardi House, you fill a search application form. Um, then uh, you, you, you pay, you pay there's, there's a fee you pay. It takes about two to three days. And the search, what the search is going to help you with is you're going to be able to know um, uh, the registered owner of the land, uh, the size of the land, and whether the land has any encumbrances. Do not buy land that you've not searched. You have to search and you have to get the results. So if the land is good, if the search is showing it is clean and everything, you now sign a sale agreement yeah, with the owner and you pay a deposit. Yeah. So once you pay the deposit, you, uh, you've, uh, you've signed a sale agreement, you now go back to the bank that pre-qualified you. You present them with, uh, uh, with the, the signed, uh, 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 the signed uh, sales agreement. And then you, you, you also give them evidence of the deposit that you've paid. It's usually about 10 to 20 percent because it's not easy to find a bank that is going to finance you 100 percent. Yeah. So the moment you've given them those uh, documents, the next thing is they will give you an offer, an offer letter. And in this offer letter, you will have terms and conditions that you're supposed to fulfill. Once you're fulfilled, then the bank will call its lawyers to basically start the charge process 
for the for the for the for the property. Can you hear me? Can hear you. Okay, yeah. So basically, they're going to they're going uh, the bank is going to talk to the lawyers. The lawyers are going to start a charging a charge process for the for the property. Then the next thing is uh, the bank's lawyers are going to talk to the seller's lawyers for them to be able to uh, furnish them with the original title deed, the sale agreement, and uh, if there are any rate and rent that basically are tied to this land, they will need the receipts for that. Yeah. Then after that, basically, the client is given uh, a charge document to fill, uh, to execute. Then the government valuer comes in. <laughs> it's a bit complicated because it's low. So the government valuer, of course, comes in and uh, starts the assessment of the stamp duty. Stamp duty is very important. So you pay for the stamp duty. The, the, the charge and the sale, ag the sale agreement has to be stamped and the duty has to be paid. Once that has been done, then a transfer is made to the new buyer. And now the, the, the property becomes yours. Then now the bank, whatever they had promised that they were going to, uh, to finance you, they'll now, they'll now send it to the, to the previous owner. You understand? So that is the yeah. mortgage process. It's a bit complicated. But when it comes to cash, it's pretty simple. You just basically go out there, hand for land. You can use the for sale signs you see on the, on, or, or, on, along the roadsides or you can actually get an agent to look uh, to, or to go to use a name you <laughs> for the land uh, yeah, once they you can do come that here. the next thing of course again a search is a must you understand um, a, a search is a must whether you're going mortgage or you're going you're going cash yeah <laughs> a search is a must so whether you're even if it is cash a search is a must so you uh, the owner is going to give you a, again a copy of the title deed which you will go with to Aldi House, you'll fill the search application form, you'll pay whatever fees are needed, and then it will take another two to three days. You understand? Yeah, we get it. So members from the horse's mouth and the me? professional's mouth, you need to research, yeah. you need to get pre-qualified, you need to shop yeah. around, you need to use professionals, you need to check documentation, very important. You, you know, uh, so the search through and through are very important. If you can't do it yourself, get a lawyer to do it for you. There's going to be a fee to it, but please use professionals along the way because at least you have a fallback plan. Um, if you're taking a mortgage and we'll have, we'll have the discussion for that another day, but really that's the process. For a lot of people who take mortgages, the house then belongs to you and the bank, mostly to the bank because, and that's why you keep paying them. And that will be a story for another day. But then at least you begin to stay in the house so you can then rent it out. So research, shop around, use professionals, check documentation, important to search, get pre-qualified so that you're searching within your budget. That really is what I'm taking out. And how about the process of building? Who wants to share with us the process of building? Yani, shortly, not as detailed. <laughs> <laughs> Mwangi, I'll let you take that. <laughs> no, Ruben. Ruben, what's the process okay. of building? No, no problem. Thank you so much. I think she has really tried to share the details, the thought and how you need to feel it. Very important because not yeah. everyone uses a lawyer from end to end. Even if you are using a lawyer, it's very important for you to understand how it works so that you can be able to point out mistakes, Know where you think maybe the process is not going well. Know that stuff. Thank you so much for that. I think, thank you. Um, the process of building, uh, especially in urban areas, I think in rural areas is a bit different. Uh, in rural areas, for those who are there, I know you just wake up and it's much easier. But in urban areas, there are regulations that you, you must be able to follow. I think I'll just try to break it down in... Uh, general terms, uh, like I said, uh, you may not remember everything. What you need to remember, you need a profession in a certain area for you to guide you. You know, remember the integrities, but when you use a profession, they'll be able to guide you. Basically, I'll try to very fast go through them. The first thing is you are trying to be, especially in rural, uh, in urban areas, in a place like Nairobi, it's very important for you to do that. Just like when you are uh, buying a house, uh, to find out whether uh, the land still belongs to you. Sometimes things do happen. 
uh, because you cannot be able to develop a property that is not yours. Actually, you cannot be able to develop a property in urban areas without a title deed. That's why you find organizations and customers crying all every time they don't have a title deed because they are disabled. You also need to find out after doing the search the regulations in the area, can I be able to do a flat here? Can I be able to do a single dwelling here? Can I be able to do a machinette here? And all those kinds. There are zoning regulations and it is much easier to be able to find out. And uh, like I said, if you are not able to, you're not sure about it, use a professional to be able to guide you on that. The most important thing is number three is the budget because um, housing and development is expensive. Building a house is not a joke. For those who have been able to do it, you spend a lot of money. So you have to ask yourself, do I have enough money to be able to build? You know, you are discussing about whether to build or buy, and we'll come to that later. But you have to decide, do I have the five million that I need to do a bungalow somewhere in Kamulu? Because that's exactly what you need. Yeah. And that QDT is aware, that's a profession who can be able to help you determine for this type of land, how much can I be able to spend to develop? There's a place where uh, someone was developing a house and it was in a valley, kind of. So they had done their plans, they thought they'd be able to use some, some bit of money for, it was a machinette. So their budget was X. But when they started developing, they realized these are, because it's a steep, it's a steep place. They have to cater for, for certain factors because you have to either do a ceiling because the house mm. has to be level or they have to maybe do a basement or something of that, something that they are not planned to do. Will that increase the cost? And that's where a professional comes in and they tell you this for this one, you need to spend more to develop on this kind of land. Of course, the next thing is to get the other professionals that are required. Of course, you have that dream every time you are developing a house. It's a dream you have every day. And that dream is in terms of, most, for most people, is the external factors, external features of the house, how the house look like. So an architect will be able to help you develop that. Uh, some architects, of course, most of them, especially in the Kenyan context at this moment, can really get some people who know what they are doing. They will not charge you a lot of money. They can be able to give you, uh, convert what is in your mind to something that you can work with and give you several options. And from there, you also need a lawyer, to be able to look at the contracts that you'll be able to develop. You need approvals from the county, assuming that you already have the plan from the uh, architect. You also need to have structural drawing. That's where a, 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 a structural engineer comes in. And all these documents need approval from the county government, uh, from NEMA, from NCA, and many other authorities. Uh, of course, after that, what you need to do is cause is to do preparation. Assuming now that you already have done the search, you know the regulation that I can do a bungalow in this area where I have bought land, for example, in Kamulu, you already know the budget you are working with and you know where you get the money for some is a loan, for some is cash. Then from there, of course, you get the architect, the lawyer to look at your document. The next thing you do is approval. The final thing that you do is the preparation that you need. Of course, you need to ensure there is water, there is electricity, security, and materials have been uh, procured. But if you cannot be able to remember all these, like I said, there are people who are there in the market who can be able to help you move from point A to point Z in your construction uh, process. These are called contractors. There are several of them. They put everything together and tell you we are going to move with you from the point you are looking, you are doing the search, or up to the day they hand over the house to you. You can be able to pay some fees for that for you to be able to be taken through the process. But like we said, it is very important for you to understand how the process moves from point A to point B to point C, so that when you yeah. hire someone, you can know whether they are ripping you off, you can know whether they are taking too long, or you can know whether they are cutting shortcuts. Because in our market today, you may not be able to trust everyone. This guy, that's uh, in a nutshell, uh, how yeah. the process goes. So, Ruben, what I hear you saying is, uh, like, you know, do the search, the search, the search, the search, as Tendo said earlier, very, very important. Uh, check if there are any zoning regulations. 
uh, you know, check your budget, how much money do you want to spend? In which case, what size of house or what kind of finishings can you afford? Check if there are amenities because um, there being amenities or lack of them thereof would determine, you know, how much money you spend, like water, like power, you know, engage professionals like the architects, the, you know, the engineers, structural engineers, get a contractor who can then bring all these things together. A lot of people in Kenya do not like to use contractors because they are perceived to be expensive. <laughs> and that is something we'll discuss another day. So if you're not going to use a contractor, get a proper site manager who can bring yeah. all these things together make sure that all your approvals are done at the county level or at the ministry of lands all those things need to be done and then put money together and then break ground that is what i hear you saying yeah, yeah. let me switch this to tendo not necessarily to go over it again but tendo do you think there are any differences between doing this in the urban area and doing it in the rural area from a lawyer's perspective or from your own personal experience is there a difference are there any parallels there All right. Um, really, you cannot you cannot uh, put it in a nutshell. You cannot like point out that this is really the difference between uh, building in the rural areas and building in the urban areas. Uh, usually, I think it should be categorized into four categories. Basically, there is documentation. Yeah. We have the first one, which is documentation. The second one, which is design. The third one, uh, probably permitting. And then the fourth one, construction. So when you're, when you're going uh, to uh, documentation, UA, you see UA, is documentation easier in the rural areas when you're constructing? Or is documentation easier in the urban areas? You see? Second thing is design. When you're designing, is it easier to get an architect in the rural areas or is it easier to get an architect when you're building in the city? And what does it mean if you're building in the rural areas to actually pull a professional architect all the way from the city to the rural areas? You understand? The third one is permitting, just as I've said, the, the permits that you need. I know that it has been revolved in Kenya. Different counties probably have uh, different places. Um, so it depends also on which county you are in. Are they really busy when it comes to construction? Or are they really, it's crazy like Nairobi? You see, th that's how to look at it. Also, another thing is construction. Uh, when you're building in the rural area and building in the urban area, um, what are the differences? You'll always find that in some places it's easier in the rural area, it's some, in some places or in some aspects, it's easier in the city. Like now construction, um, depending on the quality of uh, what you want to build, if you're building up country, if the quality is very high, does it mean you'll have to import fundies? You will have to import materials? Or if, if you're just building, uh, you know, like not, not a, a very expensive, you know, a, a very expensive uh, a home or something like that. It's cheaper when it's in the rural area. So there is no one answer to that question. You have to yeah. look at it in the four categories and weigh for yourself what is yeah. going to actually be easier or better, cheaper, more expensive. Yeah. You look at it in the four aspects, yeah. Yeah, so she has bucketed them very ably into four. She says documentation, check the documentation process, design, um, permitting in terms of approvals and, you know, zoning regulations or, or, or how uniqueness in, you know, across the different counties and construction. That is how she's bucketed them. So if you ever have to wonder or, or like discuss or think about whether it is easier to build in the rural or urban areas, those are four nice subtitles or sub areas to, to, to consider. Now let's move on into whether to buy or purchase gentlemen and lady. Uh, in your opinion, what pointers, what are some of the things that you think um, determine the Kenyan's decision to buy or to build in the urban areas particularly? 
What do you think are some of the things and what do you think they should really consider? What are some of the primary things that they should consider in making that decision? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Salim. Uh, I think I'll go first. Uh, I think the most important factor, especially in building or buying, is usually the cost. Uh, you'll find that uh, and these are research that was done the other day. Most Kenyans are more comfortable with building as compared to buying. This is bad news for developers, eh? but they still have their big share of people who buy properties. And uh, for this, is usually determined mostly by cost. I hope we are together. Okay, uh, I, can, I think I can go on. The, 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 it's usually mostly determined by cost uh, because if you're building, you can do step-by-step -step kind of development, stage-by-stage -stage kind of development. That's why you'll find some people come to companies like Username, they buy some value at that piece of property, then they finish that. Next year, they, uh, they look for, they start the process of looking for contractors or professionals, then you find somebody has uh, started buying materials, the stones and stuff like that. They do stage by stage. In three to five years, they are fully done with the house. And they do that because they don't have all this money at once. And another thing I think is important in this discussion, the question of personalization or customization, you find that people want certain design of houses. And if you go to buy a house, in a development or in a gated community. These houses are usually in a certain form. They look in a certain way. And if you don't like them, there's nothing you can do about it. You have to buy as is. So you'll find Kenyans with those dreams. I want this kind of a house. I saw it in Bugu. And I want it to be uh, done somewhere in Kamulu, for example. So personalization is a factor. Uh, and the last thing I think, there are those who are, Kenyans are business people and I heard that every Kenyan might have a hustle somewhere, even if they are working somewhere. You end up to know as 79% addressing... of urban Kenyans. <laughs> yeah. So, so there are those who are buying with a mind of uh, investment. They're asking them, if I buy here, is it going to appreciate as much as it is my own home? So there's that kind of uh, discussion. And that's where we advise people to buy properties in areas that are coming up, neighborhoods that are growing up, very fast, and the next 10 years, their precision might even be 100%. There are places where you buy property, or even if it's your own home, and the price will never change. The property prices have gone to their climax, and I think I'll highlight some of those areas. Areas that have grown up, like Lelesho and all those areas, Kilimani, uh, Westland, areas that are already at the peak, the property might not be able to appreciate. So for me, those three factors, cost, Customization and personalization. There's the issue of uh, appreciation or the issue of capital gain or the issue of investment. Is it going to appreciate or not? I got it. Um, Tendo, what's your thinking? What are some of the things that, that, that determine and what should really determine in your opinion? I will agree with him on cost. At the end of the day, it's how much money you have that is going to determine whether you're building or uh, whether you're, you're, you're buying. Another thing is time. We all know that uh, building takes time. Buying doesn't take time. So do you have time? That's another thing. Yeah, so time is another issue. Then location. I, I, sometimes the location, the location will, will, will force you to buy or the location will force you to build. For instance, if, if you want to like have a home in Westland, for instance, there is no space to build. There, there's simply no space. It, it, what, what it will mean, there is. you have to just <laughs> buy a house. There's a, <laughs> there is, there this, is no space. This, this, so, there's an acre for half a billion shillings. See, how Trust many people can afford it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> So as you move, as you, as you move, as you move near the cities, it becomes more and more difficult to build. As you move outside, it becomes easier.
to build. So as you move towards the nucleus of a city, you are moving more towards buying. As you move outside a city, you're moving yeah, more right. towards towards building. building. You understand? Yes. So for me, yeah. aside from the points that you have said that are very valid, I would look at cost, I would look at you have the time, and then I would look at the location. Yeah. So members, if you're thinking of buying or of um, building, really the things that the lady and gentleman have shared are the key. You know, the cost. Cost, which also has to do with location, because if you want to build inside, uh, say, um, Westlands, as Tendo says, there is no space. And if you get space, as the username says here, it, it will not be something that you can afford or that is even worth your time. So really, you know, where, where, whether you want to build or buy will, will, be, will be dependent on where the property that you want to own is. There's the issue of customization. If you're the kind of person who is keen on getting this, you know, full range kitchen with the pantry and, the, you know, <laughs> you might have to build that for yourself because maybe the developer did not put that into consideration. Then there is market value and capital gain. Is it something that you want to be able to sell later? Kenyans are always thinking, eh, hey, so capital gain is an important thing and if it is key for you then you perhaps want to build in areas that are not fully 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 developed yet uh, but which definitely have a potential how do you know that there's potential uh, uh, Ruben how do you know that an area has potential you may want to break that down for our members no problem I think <clears throat> before I get there I also wanted to add a point especially uh, for those most of us are either working somewhere or doing some business. Especially in the question of buying or building, I feel there's an important point about time, which was shared briefly. Uh, I look at people who are doing some job somewhere, and you ask yourself, are you going to be able to man and jengo um, when you are working? And that's why you'll find the cost goes high, the fundies are stealing from you, they are doing a poor job, this guy you may not be able to handle. So it's very important to evaluate whether you can be able to man that jungle. Most of the time it takes six to 10 months to be able to do a house. And you have to factor whether you can be able to do it. If you can't, you're better place going and taking a mortgage and getting a completed house to, to because you not save any cost. It might be eaten by all manner of unscrupulous individuals here and there. Going back to your question about uh, how to know a property is uh, going to appreciate. Uh, in username, we do that a lot because we sell value-added pieces of property and capital gain is so important for our customer. They come here for investment. So we have to give them something that can triple in value in the next five to 10 years. So this is what we do. We work with distance from CBD of a certain city, maybe Mombasa, Nairobi, uh, or Nakuru. You work with a certain distance, depending on the city. If it's Nairobi, you work with uh, uh, 60 kilometers. So we know a property that is 60 kilometers from CBD is a place where you can be able to commute every day. Come in the morning and go back in the evening comfortably. We also look at infrastructure development. Apparently, some of these maps are online uh, from the Ministry of uh, Roads, Kenya National Highway, and all those things. They share these maps. Like, uh, I think two weeks ago, there was uh, maps about the, the expressway uh, from uh, Lolongo all the way to James Gishuru. We need to know what is happening there. We have so many roads that are being developed at the moment. Most people don't know about them. And we have maps of upcoming roads. So upcoming infrastructure development is something that you need to look at. Roads, SGR, cities like Konza and such kind of stuff universities you have to check that because what matters is where are people going to live in the next five yeah. to ten years where are people going to build in the next five to ten years those are places where you should put your money for investment because it is natural people have to build every day so we check that the other thing we also check um, is the the area itself because you'll find some areas in Nairobi that are within 50 kilometers that have not been developed for so long. So the properties are so uh, affordable. One such area where you have invested heavily, 
is the Gong area. This is an expansive area uh, just after Kibiko that was not developed for a long time, yet it is 40 kilometers from CBD. So when the infrastructure started coming, the property prices were as low as 150,000 for a plot, place where you can live in Nairobi. So we realized that is an opportunity. And if you find any areas that is near the city is not developed, that is the area to invest in. For those who are building the house, for me to finish, there are areas like, uh, look at a river, for example. These are areas that are getting super highways every day, but the property prices are so affordable. If you get a super highway, the expressway, it means that you can get to town in 20 minutes, the future. Then you have this metro uh, in town. Thing, you need to look at what is coming and where will people be staying in the next five to ten years. That will tell yeah. you where you need to either build your house or where you need to buy land for it to double or triple. Not every other place. Those who are selling bushes so far away from the city, I know there are agents who are doing that maybe out of ignorance and you don't need to invest your money there. Yeah, so you check the distance from the CBD from where, you know, the boiling part of the pot is check if there is going to be commute or if you can commute every day if you are in doubt of where there is infrastructure development in the future by the government or by the county government check with username you know we'll share their contact check with them yeah. where there is going to be some sort of highway or where there's going to be a railway line or where there's going to be infrastructure that will enable you to reach where you have business you know so those are some of the things that you need to check you know to, to check just to be able to know whether you know um the property has potential or not i think we're going to take a little commercial break so our panelists can take a sip of water when we get back we'll be talking about the role of the financial institutions in in this decision to build or to buy so um we'll be back in a yes GC. <laughs> Hello, hello. 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 Yeah, hello. so um, I hope you've taken a sip of water. So guys, let us talk about financing because cost is a big deal for, um, for, cost is a big deal for builders and for homeowners. Do you think the financial institutions in this country have a role to play in that decision? Or how can they um, support our members and, and Kenyans in that decision? to buy or to or to build. Tendo, what do you think? Okay. Um Pauline, can you hear me? <laughs> can hear you. All right. So yes, 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 absolutely. As we had um, uh, as we had uh, discussed earlier, you're either buying cash or you're going for a mortgage. So it, uh, financial institutions are playing a very big role when it comes to um, home ownership. And the first thing that financial institutions need to do is to lower the interest rates on mortgages. Currently, it's at 14% per annum, one of the very, very highest in Africa. And people cannot afford it. And that is why you'll find that a lot of people uh, really think twice before even getting a mortgage facility from banks because the interest rates are really, really, really high. Um, the second thing I would think of is uh, wider mortgage products, basically to accommodate 
uh, different um, financial capabilities. Because you'll find that mortgages are usually mostly taken in Kenya by the middle class, upper middle class to middle class. The lower, the lower, the lower middle class going down, you won't find a lot of mortgages there. So probably we need to have wider mortgage product range to take care of different uh, financial capabilities. Another thing is 100% financing. Uh, just as I had said earlier on, uh, it is not easy to find a bank that will give you 100% financing. And that, of course, is an issue. When people go to look for pre-qualification, they get discouraged, even just by the deposit that they're being asked to pay. Um, very quickly, also, partnership with the public sector. Anytime banks or the private sector uh, come together with the public sector to to enhance the lives of people, it's usually easier than when the private sector is playing on its own and the public uh, sector is playing on its own. So as it is right now, uh, there are about 24,000 active mortgage accounts in the country. And that is uh, against a possibility of about 12 million. Yeah? And 2 million which are in very, very dire need. And these figures are with the UN habitat, which means that uh, we are not achieving our full potential as a country when it comes to mortgaging. It's an 800 billion uh, economy. We barely scratch the surface. I think we're at about what, 4 billion. You'll find that, uh, and it's a good thing we have a developer here. First of all, before they get the land, they, they source for the land. You find, uh, I've, I even find, I find some developers even advertising on CNN, you know? I don't know whether the, the, the people that are looking for the diasporans, you find them advertising on CNN, you find them now coming to radio stations, advertising. So at the end of the day, you find this cost goes to the end user, which at the end of the day is so expensive, nobody can afford it. So for me, I think the four main things that financial institutions can do for us, lower interest rates, mm -hmm. wider mortgage uh, products, 100% financing, partnership with the, with, with, the, with the private sector. I think for me, those four should make an impact. Yeah, I'll come back to you to explain better um, this partnership with the public sector. Uh, but before you do that, perhaps we hear from Ruben. Is there anything else that Tendo has left out that you think that the financial institution can support with in home ownership? I think over the last... Uh, one or two weeks, um, we have had discussion about interest rates, capping of interest rates. Can you hear rates. me? It's like everybody has gone silent. Yes. We can hear you. So so the discussion has been around uh, capping of interest rates. Of course, it was removed, uh, which is a good thing. I, I think one thing to add, and which came out very strongly, case. is about credit, uh, the credit scoring system, especially in Kenya. Uh, and the the beef was we cannot be able to loan to people who are high risk. And that's why uh, we did not most of them did not have access to these loans, mortgages. But there is also a counter discussion. Um, there are those whose risk profile is very low, and uh, that brings me to my point. We should have mortgages for even uh, less than ten percent for those customers who are not high risk. Because what we have is a mortgage at a certain rate, but they, uh, for the customers who are all risk, they still receive mortgages, say at 13%, for example. Even those who are risk are still at 13%. What I'm trying to say, they should have different products uh, depending on the credit risk of a person. Mm -hmm. You'll find that most people may not have that very high risk credit risk, and they may be able to take uh, mortgages. So it might go to less than 10%. If it was good to less than 10%, you find that most people who are employed in permanent jobs can be able to access these mortgages. And you may increase from 25,000 and maybe go to what Tendo is talking about, the opportunity of 12 million. We have 2.5 million employed Kenyans. Uh, I think this is a research based on maybe the best jobs uh, that, can be, uh, that they can give mortgages. That tells me that we are losing an opportunity. You have to think twice before you take a mortgage, by the way. 
And that's why it discourages most people. I think that's the only thing I can add. She has covered it so well. Yeah. And all those things. And I think somebody yeah. can be able to benefit from that. Exactly. So really what we are saying is that there are many people who can afford a mortgage and who want it. There's a lot of money in the banks. There is need for housing. It's a basic need. But there is a problem in between that something needs to be done so that this two need and the solution which is financing comes together. And the suggestions that you're making, uh, if I got that right, is interest rates. Obviously, we know that there is a government lending, the base lending rate, but whatever the banks can add on top of that, please minimize it so that more and more people can 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 access um, these mortgages. The product range, you know, uh, like Tendo says correctly, a lot of the houses are owned. You'll get that, you know, there are very few people who own houses in these cities. Yeah, they're just a handful who then own multiple houses. Yet everybody lives in a house. Every family lives in a house. This means that the the rent they are paying perhaps should be modeled in such a way that it can actually be a payment towards a certain mortgage. What really we are saying is that different products for different profiles of people, like appraise people's income, appraise people's ability, so that you know that each person is qualified for a certain product because. Right Right now, it is just mortgage. Pay 10%, we give you 14%. You know, that sort of thing. It's a bit blanket and, and, and given our, 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 um, our employment levels in this country, it doesn't cover all our requirements. The other thing is 100% financing. And I totally agree with this because, um, you know, I may be able to, um, to pay 80,000 shillings in mortgage every month. But the one thing that's coming in between me and getting that house is that I cannot raise 10% and then raise 4% stamp duty, and then raise lawyer's fees, yeah? So banks, we are calling on you because you are a key stakeholder here. We are calling on you to provide 100% financing and distribute that payment of the, of the lawyer's fee and of the stamp duty across the mortgage. You will get another 6% of Kenyans doing, you know, uh, buying these houses. And then um, we talked about credit scoring. There are people, and, and this one brings me to a point. I've seen a lot of young people not caring that about their credit history. I've, I've seen a lot of young people saying how, uh, you know, like um, uh, they cannot, they don't care. They don't care that they borrowed from Fuliza and they did not refund. Guys, this is affecting your credit rating. <clears throat> and time is coming when your interest rates are going to be higher than mm -hmm. people who are low risk people who take loans and pay, people who pay their help loans, people who take loans from circles and pay, people who pay their uh, electricity bills consistently without disconnection. Those things, as our economy matures, are going to come into play in the extent to which your interest rates are going to be high or low. So you're young, you may be, you know, uh, playing about, but I tell you, credit rating is going to be important and banks are going to have to consider it in the future. Then I would like, uh, I think we have lost Tendo for a moment and she'll come back to explain to us about the partnership between, you know, the private or the banks and the public sector. It's something that we'll come back to. So really, I think I get it. Um, tell me, um, panelists, Ruben, I see you. Um, mm -hmm. How do you suppose that the government influences a homeowner's decision or ability, if at all? And is there anything that the bank, the government can do in the housing policy to make um, home ownership easier or achievable or manageable for the ordinary Kenyan? Okay, I, I think the government has quite a number of things that they can be able to do. And I mm -hmm. think for me, the biggest one being uh, infrastructure development, uh, like the way I was talking about areas, we look for land for investment. Where Kenyans can live, we look at places that are near the city. Sorry for that. Places that are near the city, are uh, certain about kilometers, places that have infrastructure development. So I was asking, um, there are so many Kenyans who have bought plots uh, in the city. Some have more than one, some have more than two. If you mm -hmm. can only develop uh, simple things like tamas. Like if you look at Thika Road and uh, uh, Namanga Road, for example, we have uh, a bit of Gong Road and uh, Oradi Road. You look at where Kenyans have bought thousands of plots. You are only to do a tarmac, maybe 10 kilometers inside from the Superhigh, for example, 
or a main highway, uh, places that are like 50 kilometers from the city, you'll find that most people will immediately get interested to build these houses. So infrastructure plays a big role. Uh, I know the government has been doing this thing called last mile. It has affected our project positively. You'll find places that do not have electricity, now do have. They can only enhance that and ensure most places have electricity. They have tarmac within a certain radius from the city, and they have water. That is very important. You'll find that most people will make a decision to build even tomorrow. And you'll find this, even this thing of affordable housing, you'll find that most people will decide to build for themselves instead of waiting for the government to do the houses in Park Road and many other places. The other thing is about tax. I think all of us know that. They can be able to reduce taxes, especially on first-time home owner. You know, you have to pay 4% uh, some duty, especially for most houses within the municipalities and stuff like that. The other taxes that you have to do, and I think government can come and look at where the pain points are. How much do I pay? And I think the biggest is usually some duty. You know, KRA is collecting a lot of money from that, and that would be a painful yeah. decision. But they may, can make a decision on a certain segment of a certain day. For this segment, you will not be able to pay tax on certain items. I know there are initiatives that have been there. I may not know all of them, but I believe that is one of them. The other thing is approval, something that we are pushing a first phase from another organization. We can have one stop shop for the approvals that you need to be able to build a house. And you can, should be able to get these approvals in less than a week, maybe even in two days. You come to a certain hall somewhere, you get uh, NEMA, uh, National Construction Authority, county government, all of them. And we should have service level agreements and say you should get these approvals in a week's time. And it is a must and the people must take responsibility if that does not happen. That can reduce cost significantly. Because if you tell someone to go and seek an approval from the county, that is one of the nightmares. Or go to the land office to be able to get a title did approved. The last thing I'll talk about is digitization. I know it's ongoing, especially on the land sector. This is something that we must do like yesterday. If you're trying to transfer a car today, uh, we have teams. Eh? I know you know how it is done. You can actually buy a car today from someone and transfer it today and finish the whole thing online. I was asking my ourselves if we can do the same in the real estate sector. Where I buy land, you can be able to transfer. Let us not say in a day because there are legal processes <laughs> taking about the, the, the content and stuff like that. But you can change the lower bit to reduce the time taken because that what increases that is what increases the cost in our sector. I know we are heading there, but we can be able to move in much a faster speed. You find that the cost of properties will go down. A house that maybe was costing uh, 20 million, you might maybe you are able to reduce with 1 million shillings or 5 million. You may find that a million, uh, 1 million goes to people who should not have taken that cost. And then it goes down. That's how we can be able to do it from the government perspective. And there are so many other things, and I think Tendo must have one or two things they would like to say. Yes, yes, yes. Tendo, how may the government support, or how do you think they can influence or support home ownership? You know what? Um, uh, Ruben has covered a lot of it, but uh, for me, I think the, govern the government plays a regulatory duty. And basically that affects whether people are going to buy or sell. A lot of them have been covered by Ruben, but what I would like to say is uh, title deeds need to be sanctified. There are some places in Kenya where a title deed means nothing. During elections, you're given a title deed. After elections, you run out. When people cannot even trust title deeds, it becomes a problem. It really influences whether anybody wants to. There, there are places in, in Kenya where people can, you, you, nobody can buy anything tangible. People don't invest in uh, temporary, you know, in temporary uh, buildings, temporary houses. Nobody wants to buy for sure. Nobody wants to invest in a big way because they are controversial when it comes to title deeds. Yeah, that's number one. Number two is, uh, just as you said, government spending on infrastructure. At the end of the, of the day, everybody follows infrastructure. Mm. From the days of the, of the Uganda railways, that is why Bombasa is what it is, Nairobi is what Nairobi. it is. Everybody yeah, yeah, follows right. infrastructure. 
when there's infrastructure, you'll see, you know, the banders coming up, Kidogo, you'll see people building. Everybody follows infrastructure. So when the government uh, takes care of infra infrastructure, they now influence whether guys are going to build or people uh, owning more homes. Yeah, uh, th that's just basically it is. Is this the same question as uh, how uh, can the government and financing institutions support those who wish to build and buy? Or this is number eight. The eighth this is this is the next question, but I'm coming back to you on that because we lost you at that point. I'd like to recap mm -hmm. how the government may support home ownership, and you guys have covered it very well. I've gone to cities like uh, like Haborone in Botswana, where you mm -hmm. see the government has actually built tarmac roads into the wilderness. Okay, I wouldn't say wilderness, but into <laughs> areas where people still do not see themselves living in five years. If you drive that way, you will see a road, you will see traffic lights, you will see then you will see that now that land now is available for purchase. And people go for those things because they see something is happening there. You know, people follow the light. People follow, you know, um, infrastructure. In Kenya, unfortunately, it has been such that you build houses and then the city government will, will think whether they want to, finish, to construct that road for you, you know. So if, if there's anything the government can do, one is infrastructure. And something that Tendo has said that is super, super important is the sanctity of a title deed. I, I spend my entire life saving, say, half a million, and then I buy a plot worth 380 through username, and then there is water, and suddenly that land belongs to 10 people. And I know counties that are very notorious for this kind of thing. Kisumo, <laughs> pull up your socks. There needs to be sanctity of the title deed because land is existence. Existence is life. Life is children. Children is continuity. Continuity mm -hmm. is tomorrow. We cannot, you know, put, you know more emphasis that we cannot overemphasize the need for sanctity of title deeds so please county government central government that is an important part then there's a taxation tax is important but please things like um stamp duty i know kra is watching if they're not watching they'll watch in the future <laughs> because this thing is here to stay we understand can you please regulate it if you can reduce it? Kindly do maybe for first-time owners or something like that. Approvals, have it in a centralized place so that there is speed. You know, have if you can have a, a Huduma Center for land and mm. house purchases mm. so that I go there and I live with everything, where Neymar is, where the NC the National Construction Authority is, where I can get the approval so that I leave that place feeling that, you know, uh, I manage. This can only be done through digitization, as Ruben has put it. So really, if you are a government, county government officer or official watching, these are some areas where we feel as this group and in this panel that you can support us. Now, we lost Tendo at some point. I'm very interested in, in, in her sharing how the financiers or the financial institutions can partner with the public sector in a bid to help people own homes. Uh, Tendo, do you want to expound that for us a little, please? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I lost you guys at some point. It's very simple, actually. We start with financing, yeah? And in financing, we are looking at availability and affordability. First of all, that the money is available for people. And that one, we've spoken about it in mortgages. The, 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 the cost of a mortgage. What is the cost of a mortgage? And now when you come to affordability, not only is there money, but money that people can afford, and especially the people who need it, which we are talking the lower middle class and the lower class. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The second thing is the price of land. Yeah? The price of land in Kenya is really, really expensive, and it needs to be regulated. Yeah? It needs to be regulated. When the price of land is expensive, it means people are not going to own homes. Nobody can afford it. The other thing is the cost of living. That is directly in the government's hand. The cost of living directly translates to labor, the labor cost, because nobody can build a home uh, on their own unless you're this traditional um, Maasai ladies and, and, you know, the way that they could just wake up in the morning and decide, okay, I'm building a house and they, we can't do that anymore. So at the end of the day, you need labor and labor is cost of living. When the cost of living is up, labor prices go up, yeah? Another thing is energy. The government needs to look at energy because anybody who is building will need to transport building materials from point A 
to point B. At some point, you need to use electricity. Yeah. So if 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 if, if energy is not being regulated, then it becomes a problem, even owning homes. There's the issue of the tax incentives on construction materials. Yeah, that also needs to be looked at. Then uh, the issue of affordable housing. Um, like what was happening, what was happening in Kibra, uh, where government partners with uh, NGOs to be able to provide affordable housing. When you when you give the people affordable housing, mortgaging becomes easy. Yeah. But if you're not able to give people affordable housing, it becomes impossible. Like right now, the real estate um, industry, they're able to produce 50,000 housing units in a year. Am I right, Ruben? Or I'm, I'm a bit no, off the you, mark? I think you're 50, right. 000, yeah, it's yeah. about 50,000 units uh, in a year, when actually it should be 250,000 units in a year. So as you can see, we are left about 200,000 housing units in a year. That's a big mm. margin. Yeah. That's a big margin that really needs to be taken seriously. Another thing is streamlining of efficiency at the different land registries. Ruben has spoken about it. I think right now it's take, it takes about what three to six months. It could be better. Yeah, it, it could be depends. Better. Depends with the registry. Yeah, it depends. But it can't be anything less than three months. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah then yeah. Uh, we, also have, we also have the central bank. Um, the central bank has its regulations on banks that uh, they cannot lend over and above a certain amount. They, they need to have a cash ratio. So you'll find sometimes even when the bank needs to uh, want to finance you, they can't go above the cash ratio that they've been given by central bank. So in that case, they tell you, no, for this year or for this month, we've exhausted, probably should come back after a year or something like that. So I think for me, those are the eight points that if the government takes care of, it's going to stimulate more on more home ownership. Yeah. Excellent. Wow. Very well discussed. I don't think I want to go over that really. I think you 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 actually you know were very very clear. Now I, I think this ushers us I think very very easily into a pretty much the last uh, question. You know, the different models uh, that have worked elsewhere or even in Kenya to support home ownership. You see, so for instance, one of the, and I'm explaining this for the benefit of members, one of the models is mortgage, yeah, where you go, you pay 10%, the bank lends you 90%, then you pay over 15 years, and eventually the house is yours. That's a model. At our panelists, I'm hoping that, that quickly you can take us through any models that have worked in this country or elsewhere, or you want to throw in a thought that can then be utilized in developing a model that you think can work in this country, knowing what you know, to support home ownership, to stimulate home ownership. Ruben. Yeah, let's, yeah. <laughs> I Ruben. No, no problem. Uh, thank you, Ted. I was listening keenly to some of the points. I think I'm also learning some some new points in her yeah. last uh, discussion. Yeah, I think there are several models that have been used. You talked about the mortgage. There's also the the most common model in Kenya is the stage by stage kind of development for a house, where you first buy a plot from any investment, maybe for half a million shillings or less. The next thing you do, you look for, you take a personal loan. I have friends who have done that. You take a personal loan to be able to do the foundation up to a certain point. When you're able to pay that loan, you look, there are those, especially if you're employed, you look for bonus, the per diem and all those things. You keep going up until in five years you are done. Most people have done that. For those who are doing small businesses the same way, you get a contract here, you do, you get maybe a million, you throw it into the house. You keep doing that until you are done. For me, I think that's the model that most people use. You look at the construction of houses in Kenya. One for mortgage, 25,000 mortgages is too small. They're actually 26 as per the last uh, uh, I think it was uh, that was done. The other model that okay. I think uh, is something that we can really look at is the cooperative model. Uh, I think of a but the weekend I was somewhere, I was talking to a cooperative society. They wanted to know how they can get into housing. Of course, they have a lot of contribution. 
and uh, this is something that i think that can work in kenya we are an average kenya maybe is in one or two chama uh if you're not in one don't be worried you can still do it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, chamas are holding trillions of shillings in their bank accounts as we speak this is money that can be used to buy maybe five acres somewhere at the first stage of development and uh, as members contribute uh, i have one of the projects by one of the developers where in five acres piece of property they have developed a hundred houses uh, uh those are small three bedroom bungalows with a very small space so what i'm trying to say with all these contributions a circle can be able to step by step be able to develop a state where members contribute maybe as low as a thousand per month and there are many of them so every year they hand over houses depending on the plan to some members so they continue like that you might find in 10 years they have been able to do it because what happened if you try to do it alone, especially if you are the low income earner, I'm not talking about people who earn maybe even half a million per month. I'm talking about people who barely make even 50,000 per month. When you are so many and you wait, when you are alone and you wait to be able to buy land, it will take you so long. When you are alone and you try to build a house, a normal bungalow, three bedroom bungalow in Nairobi will cost you maybe five million shillings to build. Three to five, if you are lucky in most places. For you to be able to get that money, you stay for, for a long time. But if you came together in a cooperative model, that money that you contribute every month, maybe the first few months you can be able to buy land. The second, you go to the next stage. For me, I feel like that's something that you can be able, looking at our culture of coming together in chamas and investment groups, that's something that you can be able to explore. I think. Uh, looking at uh, Tendo, it's like she has an idea and she'd like to contribute. <laughs> I think it's fair to no, give no, no, her I, 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 I agree with you absolutely. Like, uh, uh, it's either uh, people are using the ab ab arbitrary um, method of you, 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 you get a lump sum, you start, and then from your salary, you, you, you just keep developing it slowly by slowly until. The, the, the moment when it will now be a full house there's that one and it's really really common among a lot of people then uh the mortgage of course we've spoken about it then the circle loans the circle loans are actually very popular because of the collective effort where yeah. everybody comes together and they're able to do big things and move all at the same time because um of the collective power but of course you know we also have the off plan the off plan yeah. buying now where i develop a, a, a basically starts off and uh, advertises and you start paying slowly by slowly as the developer also uh, the the continues deal. the construction then we have also the very funny one the tenancy purchase agreements where you're already actually in a house you're in a landlord's house and you decide yeah. to forgo the, the mortgages you you, for, you forgo everybody so you, you agree with your landlord that okay how much how much is this house you know, and it's like, okay, it's 3 million. All right, so your rent is going to be uh, 30K, 30K, or if it's usually 20K, it goes to 50K. It's more like a mortgage, but it's arbitrary. It's like a tenancy agreement. So after, after, after a period of time, the house basically becomes yours. You know? Yeah. I remember when you were younger, the National Housing Corporation used to do that. Yes. It's called, yes, 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 yes. called rent to own. <laughs> yes, I call rent it to own. Yes. rent to own so i think i can only think of those four basically the mortgage the rent to own off plan and circle but the one that probably works the best for kenyans if you want to move at a at, at a faster pace than the one of using your salary where every month you put in 20k next month you put 15k you wait maybe for for, for maybe a, a, a little bit of a loan you move it you know probably the circle one goes a little bit faster because of the collective power yeah, and it's a culture. It's a Kenyan culture, yeah. Yeah, the good thing with the Kenya, why why that might even work better is because Kenyans are already given to the spirit of Harambe. You know, let's get together and do this, you know. I know of a model that seems to be working in the, in the middle class where, you know, a few people come together. You know, it's like an investment group. You're 10 people, you contribute 50 or 100,000 shillings every month. And after a while, you go and buy land, decide to build yourself 10 houses, and each person takes, you know, you get a contractor, and each person yeah. takes a house. 
you know so so that that yeah. works and i feel i think that it can work even beyond you know the middle class i think uh, people who are of, of you know the middle lower class can get together maybe more people maybe cheaper houses but get together buy land get a contract and let them build for you and you buy that house for less than half of the market price if you were to buy it readily built right Interesting, mm. interesting. Wangi, I don't know if you have any uh, question that I've left out before we let the mm. lady and the gentleman go. Maybe I, I would like to push a point through. Yeah? Yes. Uh, before be, before you come to an end, um, I know most people want to sleep, especially if they are in Kenya. So <laughs> I, I would like to say, if you have access mm -hmm. to low interest rates, and this is something that I have been trying to enlighten, especially my friends. You have access to low interest rates. So those who work in banks and you get a 6%, uh, maybe in uh, uh, like UN, I don't know. But there are some organizations that extend and ensure that you get low interest rates. A mortgage is so perfect for you because in most cases, the rent might be higher than the, the mortgage repayment. What is happening here is an opportunity. You can be able to own a house. If the rent is uh, lower than the mortgage, is higher than the mortgage payment, meaning that the house can be able to pay itself. And uh, that takes me to a point. That is the effect of having low mortgage rates in any country. If we had mortgage rates of 6%, you'll find that the rent is usually higher than the mortgage payment. So you just need the deposit for the house, the house you pay itself forever. So if you work in a bank or you have access to interest rates, please don't waste time. Just take a house and ensure that ha that house keep paying itself. And remember, for some houses that can appreciate, after three or, or two years, you can be able to sell that house for two million more. You can be able to make an extra income in capital gain. That is only if you have access to low interest rates. If you are talking about 15%, it can't work for you. So that's another thing, especially if you are listening to me, and you have delayed and you have not made this decision. For me, I feel it is much easier for you than building. If you have access to low interest rates. And, I think I can and, and, and Ruben, when you say one. low interest rate in Kenya today, we know that the average rate is 14. Which would yes. be low? What's below interest rate? I think six, well, I'm, six I'm talking about uh, some organizations. Eh? I've worked yeah. for one. They had a staff scheme where they are offering, you take loans with this bank, you get it at 6% for mortgage. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, yes. for mortgage. You get yeah. it at 6%, yes. Yeah, and, and, and so you're saying, you're saying, just to reiterate, you're saying that it, you're encouraging people who have access to low interest rates, as low as six yes. or even eight, yes. to go for yes. mortgages because then it, yes. it works for them. Because once they raise yeah, the deposit, I, the rest of the payments are done by the house, uh, the rent. The house. Makes a lot of sense. It does make after, sense. After two years, I've seen somebody do that. After two years, if you don't like the house, sometimes for those areas that are growing up so fast, you can make two million more in terms of capital gain, and yet the house is paying itself. A good scheme. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And 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 if you don't want to sell it, you can then go for an equity release and actually get yes, another house. Yes. Yes. You know, so but that that's a discussion for another day. We'll be discussing <laughs> mortgages later for land. Yeah. Uh, by yeah. the way, in this model, I know that a place, a, a, a bank like Housing Finance, have this thing that they call Macau where they actually um, mortgage construction. So if a house is going to cost you 5 million, uh, they give you the money in tranches and then you pay it as a mortgage. So a house that has a market rate of say 25 million, but which uh, costs say 10 million to build, um, will only cost you 10 million and this 10 million will be mortgaged over say 10 or 15 years. So there is that as well. Members, you may want to check that. I'm not marketing for them. You may want to check that, but it's a model that could also work. Mwangi, do you have any question? Uh, no, I, I don't have a question, but I have some, some points actually to raise. I've been following the discussion from the, from the start. Uh, maybe to, re to recap on something I think I missed on is... Uh, when you are talking about uh, what are these factors that uh, influence a prospective homeowner 
to be able to decide whether to buy or to build. I think there's an aspect to about uh, where do people work because uh, as Ruben said at some point that there's this issue of about hassle. Where does, that, where does someone hustle? And I think that is a big factor to determine uh, where someone would actually, uh, whether they will actually build or buy. And when you look into that, you also find that most people where they work, you find that they are not able to actually uh, in a position to buy the house or to actually build in that place or, or even get land in, in where they work. And therefore, most of them maybe will go to an option of buying. And therefore, coming to that, that means it's a more, it's an expensive uh, affair to actually buy a house near where you, you buy. So uh, coming uh, also to the previous question is based about financing. Access to financing uh, also, I think, uh, can contribute to actually uh, a person making the decision whether to buy or to build. Uh, as you said, Salim, that uh, most of the young people actually are not even aware or taking caution about their credit score. And therefore, later in life, they'll actually be able to find out that they don't have access to financing. So that means uh, if, if you have, maybe you are in the informal sector and you don't have a credit history with a financial institution, means your access to financing is actually limited. Therefore, when it comes to building, you'll, you'll be more likely to go uh, incremental housing way rather than buying. And that's something else I, I, I also noticed maybe it could be uh, influenced the decision to build or buy. Coming to the last question that you've uh, just uh, uh, asked about what the government can do to actually uh, help or, or improve the situation in housing in Kenya. Uh, there are two points I got from uh, uh, Tendo and uh, Ruben about uh, the cooperative societies, uh, those chamas like Jenga, which is actually a great idea. We also got about uh, the centralization of services like uh, the approvals of uh, development, uh, like the drawings, architecture, NEMA, all those, if they were centralized, it would be actually much faster and cheaper. So I also had some others to add to that one, is uh, like, uh, you know, the land tenure system in Kenya, whereby you find most people have land, but they also don't have the title deed. So that puts them in a, in a position where they, they can't build permanently, they can't either get a was in some area build and therefore they have to put up a semi permanent housing or temporary. so I think that's a one place where the government uh, as Ruben mentioned the digitization of, of the lands that in this land that uh, hand to help uh, homeowners. Also I have another one uh, I think the government can also play a role in the as as, as we see often government uh, getting into public-private partnerships uh, with actually uh, investors. We can also have even government uh, promoting that PPP, uh, the PPP, those partnerships in, in the housing sector, in that uh, we can have joint ventures, for instance, uh, whereby you see most people who build incrementally is because uh, they access these finances. Anapata pesa kidogo na save an agenda. But we, if we get like joint ventures, we'll have situations whereby if a uh, if the government has actually implemented the land tenure system is effective, we have a homeowner who has a land and they have a title deed. And then we can have investors actually using that title deed, they can develop that land in a joint venture with the owner, and then they can recoup their returns from actually the rental income or the revenue that will be generated by the, by the development on that land. And that can be shared yeah. uh, as agreed between the, the homeowner and the investor. Also, the last yeah. thing is uh, I want to mention about okay. uh, devolution. <laughs> yeah, just, just give you a, I think this is the last one. Eh? Devolution, when, when we passed the new constitution uh, and it came with the devolution thing, I think devolution also is, is a part where actually the government can be able to achieve the affordable housing program because when devolution came, it also came with the devolved function of the, of the government, the housing, mm -hmm. also like the approvals, also like... Uh, allowing county government the independence to actually also uh, be in private partnership. This can actually improve uh, the housing sector in that uh, we can have a uh, decentralization of services like from areas that are highly populated, like Nairobi. The government can actually yeah. have some of those services being decentralized to other areas. And therefore, that means uh, equal distribution also of wealth and resources uh, 
within Kenya. That means uh, you also yeah. find that land will be uh, very affordable in, in, the, in the rural areas. So that, that's all I have. Uh, maybe I, I, I noticed throughout the discussion, and those are my contributions. So uh, yeah. if you allow, Salin, I think we can, we can also go through some of what uh, people are commenting on the comment section. Yeah, quickly, so Mwangi. For, yes, maybe for a minute. We have uh, Bridget uh, Kazuria is saying, I think she's saying building is, a, is better, but there are people who are out there masquerading as contractors, yet they are not qualified. It is useful to have a lawyer to drop an argument for you. Yeah, I think that one, we covered that one earlier in the session. Uh, we also have uh, Simon, Simon saying that it is good you guys have stressed out on doing a search on any property. We also need to ensure the property and the ground matches what is in the map as well as ensure property is not mentioned in the Ndungu Commission report. I think that's something yeah. uh, we shall look later. Ndungu report is a bit... Uh, expansive and then we have anthony tony on cost land is a major factor in this regard especially in nairobi are the are the land rates justified is there any hope that the bubble will eventually burst and prices come fairly down i think this is a topic we covered last time real estate bubble which we shall also cover in future in detail uh, yeah. we also have uh, architect waidaka saying buying or building a, ho a home uh, depends on just mentioned factors boils down to preferences, taste, and time. I think that also we, we covered that one. We also have John yeah. Kakunyi. Yeah. The Kenyan economy seems not to be doing so well, and the first casualty in the macro factors would be speculative assets, the land, house, land and house falls. Do you see the value of land and, by extension, the housing cost going down? If not, what would be the underlying assumption? I think this is something we covered in our previous topic also, the real estate bubble, yeah. uh, this we can be able to share with them. Uh, we also have uh, Malimo Simon Rishuki. Uh, we have a big problem in Kenya where it comes to the cost of, when it comes to cost of construction materials, the government should be more in regulating and subsidizing the cost of such building materials, lower the time yeah. level amount of such to help developers to have an easy time. Yeah, this yeah. is true, and I think we also covered in the session at an earlier stage. Then yeah. we have uh, Humphrey Masharia. There is already argument to the public, the government sector, where the employees of such are getting the mortgage at 3 to 5%. What is required is private argument to the mortgages are then poorly structured. I think this is in regard to what Simon was explaining about actually getting, uh, making money out of such a... Uh, mortgages i think that will be the last one there is no one else thank you for all those guys who participated in this discussion yeah that's all uh for my side yeah so, Be before it. we go before we go tendo thank you for captioning all that mwangi um before we go tendo uh, do you is do you have something that you'd like to tell prospective home owners or buyers look into the camera one minute or half a minute and tell it to them where I should tell them whatever you want <laughs> ensure you search search that's all i can say search, search. don't go getting just go and search please yeah excellent excellent and and ruben um something about 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 home ownership coming from username uh, would you like to look into the camera and tell them and perhaps give them your contacts so that if they have further questions, they can come to you? Okay, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, all of you, for listening to us. It's uh, quite a good discussion. I believe most of you have been able to uh, to benefit from it and you'll do something about it. I wanted to highlight just two issues before we close. For those who are discouraged by the fact that they are scoopers, contractors, land agents, companies, and all those brokers. And I would tell you today, don't be discouraged. This might be less than 20% of the uh, agents in the industry. 80% are doing a good job. You just need to ensure you use a lawyer to be able to do a search for you, be able to, to tell you whether this company is legit or not. You can also do search for yourself. Ensure you visit the property that is being sold. Ensure you work with the organization in companies that are known to deliver. Check whether they have history of delivering title deeds online and all that.
kind of information and be okay. So don't be discouraged. If there is a risk in any uh, sector, it tells you that that is a sector with good return. That's why you hear all these frauds. If there's nothing to be made in real estate, you will never hear any fraud. So what you need to manage is the risk. Number two, they talk about bubble. There are those who are wondering if I buy land today. You have to give me some returns. What is important is buying something called selected real estate. Selected real estate means that you don't buy anything that is being sold out there. What is important to buy for real estate is places in Kenya or in, uh, in major urban centers that will develop, not by choice, but the natural progression of things. There are places where Kenyans must build houses. I'm talking about places like Gong, where we have so many projects, places like Kanguda Road. People will build there. Your kids are coming to the city, they are not going back to the village. They'll have to build there and their generations to come. That is rural urban migration. So there are places that will grow whether they like or not. So that's, those are places we call selected real estate. And that's why you hear people calling a bubble. A bubble is where you find properties where people cannot buy. Most of these are most likely in high end where the buyers are so few. But in Kenya, we have a housing need of two, uh, two million, accumulated two million houses. That tells you there's an opportunity. But these two million houses are in the affordable segment. So if you're able to invest there in the affordable segment, whether it is land or housing, you are very assured of return. So what I'm telling you, the opportunities, don't just sit there and say there's a bubble, the economy is doing poorly. You must ensure that you do something. If you want to build a house, uh, whether you are employed, whether you are doing a small business or something of the sort, look at your specific circumstances. If you are not, um, uh, if you're in a small businesses, we even have people who do do this who have bought land with us. They come as a group and they're able to buy not 10 pieces, maybe five pieces, and they keep doing that. If you're employed, you have unsecured loans, especially at this moment. You may have 6%. Take that mortgage. You may have opportunity to be able to develop your house step by step. What are you waiting for? What I'm trying to encourage you now, look at your circumstances and take action. And don't wait. Properties in some areas become very expensive three years down the line. So if you do not make a decision today, you'll have made a mistake worth 2 million shillings. Maybe a property worth 2 million, you buy it at 3 million in the next three years. Why waste two million shillings? What I'm trying to tell you, make a decision tomorrow. And that's what I would like to encourage all the Kenyans all over the world who are listening to us. And those who are our customers, we appreciate you and we thank you. And you told me to share my contact. I'll start, yes, with, please. I'll start with the easiest and uh, allow me to do this because people may not be able to remember many things. You can SMS the word plot to 20321 because with that we'll be able to get in touch with you so easily. You can go to our website www.usernameproperties.com You can uh, check our Facebook page. We have the biggest following in social media. Look for username with red and green and uh, we, we might be the only real estate company in Kenya with a blue tick with more almost 500,000 followers. We also Instagram look for username properties in Twitter use look for username Inc. But if you forget everything, just SMS your name or plot two zero three two one and we'll get back to you. We'll be able to chat you. If you come to Facebook, social media, we'll also be able to chat with you. We have three offices in Kenya. Our head office is in Lamarck Towers, where I'm currently uh, speaking you to you from. We have an office in uh, Nairobi CBD and International Life House, uh, sixth floor, another one in Nakuru for the Rift Valley region and that region uh, um, at uh, fourth floor of Assumption Center. This is a Catholic uh, building next to the Ministry of Land. And if you come there, you'll be able to serve you and you'll be able to get a very affordable pieces of properties going for between 150000 to 800000 all inclusive value added, titles included. You can't believe it. Please come and join us. And let us give this country. Let us ensure our countrymen get housing from the affordable point of view. And thank you so much. God bless you and good night.
Excellent. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you, members, uh, for staying put to the end of this. It's been a long one, but obviously with value uh, to it. Thank you, Ms. Tendo, for showing up. Uh, I know it's um, traffic hour where you are uh, in Europe. <laughs> and and thank you, Ruben, for pitching. Obviously, we will get in touch. And, and later, you know, please check this thread. There are questions that might come up. If you can, please engage with our members and continue as, uh, answering those uh, those questions. Otherwise, thank you so much for pitching. God bless you. Thank you for your mind and brain and opinion. Uh, we shall be inviting you again because you are in this space. And uh, uh, from uh, my own assessment, this has been a really, really good profile uh, panel. Thank you so much and God bless you. Have a good night, members. Bye and keep building. <laughs>